The second place in Revelation that describes the rapture is Revelation 14. Now you say, wait a minute, Pastor Anderson, why would the, Reve why would the Revelation describe the rapture back in chapter 7 and then all the way in chapter 14 again? Well, that's easy because as you're reading the book of Revelation, it goes in chronological order. Chapters 1 through 11 are in perfectly chronological order. But then when you get to chapter 12, all of a sudden you jump way back in time. And it's pretty obvious because when you start reading chapter 12, you're reading about the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, that should tell you right away we've gone back in time. And so you read about the birth of Christ. And then in chapter 13, you read about the tribulation. And then in chapter 14, you read about the rapture and about God's wrath being poured out after the rapture. Chapters 15 and 16 go into the seven vials of God's wrath and so on. So when you read the first half of Revelation, you start out in the first century A.D. with John on the Isle of Patmos. Then you read about the events of the tribulation, then the rapture, then God's wrath is poured out. Well, guess what? In the second half, it's the same order. In chapter 12, you're in the first century A.D. with the birth of Christ. Then you read about the tribulation in chapter 13, the raptures in chapter 14, the wrath is poured out after. So the order is always the same when you're reading the book of Revelation. It's always tribulation, then the rapture, then wrath. Well, it's no different in chapter 14. In chapter 13, we have the tribulation where the Antichrist is forcing people to get a mark in their right hand or forehead to buy or sell. Then in chapter uh, 14, you have the rapture. 15 and 16, you have God's wrath. <laughs>